Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Saturday, August 7th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 26 days. The game against Michigan in 112 days. We got a chance on Friday to watch a little bit more of Ohio State football practice. We also got a chance to talk to Ohio State defensive coordinator Kerry Combs and the Ohio State cornerbacks. There was a lot to talk about after that, so I am joined today. My guest is Buckeye Scoop beat reporter Tony Gerdeman. We uh, got a chance, as I said, to watch about four periods of practice. Not quite as much as we did earlier in the week, but, you know, there were some takeaways there. But I feel like most of what we got was out of those interviews afterwards. You know, Combs is always a very entertaining interview, um, but he had a lot to say about a lot of different guys. Um, I, I guess my first takeaway was Cam Brown, and, you know, he was someone who kind of jumped out to you just as we were watching practice. It is very big to have Cam Brown back out there uh, at corner this year for Ohio State. Yeah, and he was making plays when we saw him in uh, some mini field action. He broke up a couple of passes, and it's just good to see him no longer jogging off by himself, running off by himself, getting... You know, just rehabbing or whatever. He looks like he's full go. And we know Ryan Day said he would be on a pitch count. We didn't see any, like, we didn't see much today. But he was, he looked like he was full go. And once they're, once he's going one-on-one with receivers, I mean, it looks like he's he's fine. Um, you know, talking to the other guys, they didn't seem to think he was any slower. Ryan Watts said he's as fast as he's ever been. And all, everything seems to be good on that end. Yeah, and, you know, he is someone, he, he was asked, you know, when did you sort of feel like you were kind of back? Because Achilles injuries are tough because you're just kind of running, you're running, you're doing everything normally. It's not like you took a bad step. It's just you're running, you're running, you're running, and all of a sudden there's an explosion and you're down on the ground and your season's over. So it's just there's a little bit of a confidence piece there with those. And just, you know, the quick change of direction that you need to be have as a corner, that can hurt you there as well. So that that is a potentially devastating injury mm-hmm. for a corner. He was asked, you know, when did you kind of start feeling comfortable again? Why did you start getting your confidence back again? He said it was this spring. Earlier this spring is when he he really did start feeling better and and feeling more like himself. You know, this seems like it's very much a just a cautious, you know, just be cautious kind of thing right now where he feels good. He feels like he's kind of 100 percent, but he knows he doesn't want to push it too much. And Kerry Combs was asked, you know, was this just like, well, you feel comfortable with him and, and so you don't mind him missing reps? And Combs was like, oh, no, 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 no. We want him to get every rep you possibly can. And, you know, yes, he played last year, but he only played for like a game and a half last year. And he didn't have a ton of experience before that. So, you know, you think of him as a returning starter. It's like, well, yeah, but you kind of put an asterisk on that one. Uh, going back to uh, corners coming back injured, I remember when uh, Marshawn Lattimore, <clears throat> Marshawn Lattimore had his hamstrings that he was dealing with coming into 2016, and Combs said like every time Marshawn Lattimore would go full speed, he would hold his like Combs, Combs himself would hold his breath, hoping that nothing would go wrong. And so it's it's interesting that they have to give Cam Brown as much work as possible while also being careful with giving him too much. Uh, further back in the uh, in the uh, secondary, we didn't get a chance to talk to Josh Proctor, but we got a chance to talk to Kerry Combs about Josh Proctor. Proctor's, you know, he's another person who's a returning starter, and you, you know, it feels like he's been playing for quite a while. He was a contributor two years ago. He started last year, but there's always kind of the but with him. It's like, you know, he he flashes, but how consistent can he be? How reliable is he? Combs said they finally feel like he's a little bit more reliable. That feels like that answers like a potentially a huge question for them. Yeah, it's the single high safety. It's the last line of defense. It was the, one of the pieces missing last year. And if you don't have it, you can't run this defense. And if Josh Pryor, now, Josh Proctor is now that guy and can be reliable, because it's not about necessarily making plays. It's about being Jordan Fuller, the most reliable player we've ever seen. You know, you don't. He wasn't Malik Hooker, but when he took over, it's like. You didn't feel like you were missing anything because he is so reliable. And just just make tackles, be in position, bat passes down. You don't even need to intercept them necessarily. But we know, like he has a he came in with a reputation as a ball ball finder, a ball hawk. Kind of has now a reputation of like dropping some passes. So that consistency, if it also leads to some interceptions as well as just being in the right place at the right time. Now you're talking about a guy who could be the difference between winning the Big Ten winning a national title yeah i mean the secondary was kind of the big question the big issue last year 
you feel like at this point he should be at that point? And I think the expectation based on where he was when he came in and sort of that first year was by now he would be a potential All-American. If he's anywhere close to a potential All-American this year, that's, that would be huge for them. Um, you know, another guy who is, you know, has been around a while, but it's like, okay, when is it going to happen for him? Demario McCall. Demario McCall has been around forever. You've seen him on offense. You've seen him at running back. You've seen him at wide receiver. You've seen him in special teams. Now you're seeing him at corner. Combs said, you know, he will play. Like, he was very definitive. He will play this year. And, and so Demario has put in a ton of work uh, to get ready. But, you know, there, there were a lot of people who just kind of asked Demario, like, so – why? Why, why? why, you know, this is your fifth year now. Why are you still here? Sixth. Why would you? Sixth year. Sixth year now. Why are you still here? Like, I mean, I, I wondered after last year, is he just going to go transfer to, uh, you know, Kent State mm-hmm. and go be a super dynamo, 250 yards a game player in the MAC? And that wasn't what he chose. He chose to do, to change sides of the ball, learn an entirely new position. Like, so... Why did Demario McCall do that? Well, he did say that he has play, he played corner in high school, so you know easy, easy <laughs> transition. He also said playing receiver has helped, but he, he was asked several times in many different ways, like, "Why are you here? Why didn't you leave?" And he said, it, "Ohio State is really hard to leave. The brotherhood is real, and it is really hard to leave." And so he he also viewed if you transfer, that's like quitting, and he didn't. You know, he just talked about his upbringing, and it, it's. That's not who he is. And so, yeah, he thought let's. it was his idea to go to defense. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we can do. And I asked Ryan Watts about it. I'm like, you know, how, what's it like watching this guy come over in spring? And he's like, it's just, it's been incredible because you can tell he's, he, he, what Ryan Watts said is he takes the technique and, and uh, the teachings from the coaches and puts it to use because he hasn't been doing it for a while. So he wants to get better. And it's not like he doesn't view himself as knowing more than the coaches and sometimes a corner who's been a corner forever like this is how I back pedal mm-hmm. all right I know what I'm doing whereas DeMario is taking all of that coaching in and uh, putting it to good use and uh, so it's just one of those guys and there, we were live streaming his interview weren't necessarily a lot of people watching it but I would I would suggest go to our YouTube page check out that interview with DeMario McCall gives you some insight into a guy who's been here for a long time said in a moment of candor said nobody wants to be here for six years but this is that's this is the plan that has been set forth for him that he is taking on and is doing it and he said that um, he's always going to have a smile he sees everything that people say about him not positively and negatively he hears it all but he said the people who talk bad about him are never going to see him without a smile um Kerry Combs called Demario McCall a piece of clay and it was just kind of like alright you can do whatever you want you can turn this into whatever you want to do because as as Ryan Watts said you know same thing Kerry Combs said like he doesn't go in he doesn't he knows he doesn't know so he, they, there have been plenty of times when they have been teaching a technique and Demario has been the one that they've pointed to as like look at how he does this when they go back and watch film look at how he does this this is the way to do it because he doesn't know any better so he's just if they tell him to do it this way, well, he's going to do it that way. No he bad habits. He, exactly. He has no no bad habits at this point. Um, someone who did apparently, you know, sort of admitted a little bit he had some bad habits. Seven Banks last year. He, he was the number one corner last year-ish around, you know, maybe behind Sean Wade. But he's definitely expected to be the number one corner this year. He's someone that you see projected, you know, first round NFL draft pick. And he was asked about that. And it was kind of like, mm, you know, he, he knows he's not there yet. He knows there's a lot of work to do between point A and, and point B. Um, but he said that one of the biggest differences for him is he's spending more time in the film room. But when he's in the film room, he's being more active in the film room. He's, you know, he's not just like sitting in there and having the video playing in front of him. He's actively watching it he's he's taking notes he's paying you know he's paying attention he's trying to be more engaged with everything there this is you know this is a year that's big for him personally just as a you know if you are if you can work yourself into a first round pick well that's a pretty darn big uh, that's a pretty darn big check you're picking up this time next year but also for ohio state I mean, we talked about Josh Proctor, and if they can get if they can get Josh Proctor to where he was supposed to be, how big that would be. If they can get Seven Banks to the point where he's just the next guy off that first round Ohio State cornerback assembly line, that answers one of the 
biggest potential questions this team has. Yeah, it sounds like Seven Banks is old film watching practices like when wife is like let's watch some let's watch tv show together and you just you sit there and you watch it but are you really watching it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. no it's like let's watch this period piece uh, yeah okay but you're not really investing in it and now he's investing in things and go back to what demario said these players are all on social media they know what people say about them what buckeye fans have said about them what the critics have said about them they also know from watching the film that they weren't as good as they should have been and so they all have these individual uh, needs and desires to get better and Seven Banks is no different because as you said he knows the potential that could lay ahead for him with a good year and you know he's got everything that they want size speed length now he's got the experience and uh, pretty much the entire package that they saw when they recruited him now it's right here for him. Another guy who has has the length going for him, Ryan Watts. He was something that Kerry Combs was asked. It was, I think it was the first question for Kerry Combs was about Ryan Watts. And just like, you, you don't get a corner that's that big very often because he's, what, 6'3", right? Six, he said 6'3 and a half today. Oh, okay. Well, he's growing. He's a growing boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, six, I mean, 6'3 and a half. You, you, you don't, that is a luxury that most teams don't have. You, I mean, normally a tall corner is 6'1". So 6'3 and a half, Kerry Combs said he's oh, one of the biggest guys he's good. had. Talked about how, you know, what an advantage that is to have a guy who's, who's like that. He's someone who I think, you know, I mean, this is probably the expectation for him is maybe based a lot on the fact that he had an interception on the first drive in the spring game. When everyone was watching the spring game, he had that interception of Jack Miller in the end zone. So everyone's going, aha, this is the year of Ryan Watts. But it seems like he's sort of progressing. And he, you know, maybe we lump him and Legend Cavazos in this, in this question together where you know, the two guys who were the true freshmen last year. And now it's the second year, and sort of we talked about the traditional Ohio State cornerback progression where you end up as the first-round guy. Seven Banks is trying to take, like, the fourth step in that mm-hmm. process. Those guys are trying to take the second step in that process. And, you know, Watts has sort of continued to grow. Cavazos seems like he's finally healthy. He's actually out on the field and able to play. Like, I mean, again, depth was such an issue at that position last year. If those guys can stay healthy, if those guys can stay on the field, that just that goes such a long way because Terry Combs said again, and we, we, how many times have we heard him say, you want a three-corner rotation, you want a four-corner rotation. Those are potentially corners number three and four in, in that rotation. And Watts talked to him. He he got a bunch of, of reps in the spring because Cam Brown or yeah, Cam Brown was out. Seven Banks was out towards the end. And he said that, that the spring just helped him so much because they didn't have spring. They had one spring, game, one, one or two practices last year. And he only had one before he like, hurt, hurt his hamstring. So uh, just the work he got in the spring has made him a much better player. He said he, can, he feels better. He knows people doubt him because of his height, but he says he's faster than he was last year, has the quickness to handle everything you need from a corner, which is still, when he said six, three and a half, it's like he, he looks it too. Like he's not one of these six, three and a half corners that's going to show up six, one at the combine. Like he legitimately looks like you should not be playing corner. You should be a safety or even a linebacker. Uh, one other guy that we did get to talk about who we didn't get to see today, we'll get to see probably later on in the fall when, when we get to the safeties, but Court Williams. Court Williams is someone we talked about after the first round of interviews because he's, you know, guy, guys keep talking about him and just the incredible work ethic he's had. And coming back from an ACL injury last year, missed the whole year. He's someone who, you know, was talked about as a future captain even when he was in high school. He was talked about as a future Ohio State captain. So, you know, you have you have the good makeup there where, where – this is someone who's probably going to be willing to put in the work and, and you know, do all the things you need to do to become an excellent player at Ohio State. Ryan Day talked about him at Big Ten Media Days as a guy who was, you know, the the, the hardest working guy on the team. Adam, you know, when, when Buckeye Scoop tweeted that out, I think Adam Stewart, one of the trainers, quote tweeted it and said he would agree because he was working with Court Stewart all of last year. And that was the same thing. Uh, Kerry Combs just said the same thing. Like, you just, you are not going to outwork Court Williams. You know, I, I guess he, he's probably a bullet. You know, we, 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 he, we, we thought he was a bullet, then Ryan Day said safety, and then maybe he's now a bullet again. Wherever he is, you know, he's another one of those, just he's like another one of those pieces where I don't, you know, I don't necessarily expect him to be the starting bullet or the starting right. whatever safety he might end up being. But for a team that had such depth issues last year, it's another reason to think that that may not be an issue this year. Yeah, he's going to be somewhere, and it may not be in a starting role. Like Josh Proctor only started a couple of games last year. It could be mm-hmm. something like that where he's in different, several different places. And as Kerry Combs said, they they need the right 11 guys for each individual play. And that could be these four defensive backs on one play and these other four on another play. 
So they're going to find ways to use these guys. And with a guy like Court Williams, who does everything you want, it feels like there's going to be a number of ways to use him. But there's just there. It seems they're so deep right now. So a lot of these things have to shake out, and, and Court Williams will have, maybe have to move ahead of some guys to play as much as maybe uh, the hype would allow. But even if it doesn't entirely happen this year, just keep the name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just this is the optimistic time of year for college football teams like everyone's undefeated everyone's you know i think if you polled uh, the average fan base or the average uh, team or coaches you know and you said how many games do you win uh you would end up with a win with you know overall conference winning percentage of about 800 which is like well mm-hmm. I, I have a feeling it's going to work out to 500 just as it does every year but you know there's just you, you go through the whole corner room and you, you know Terry Combs liked the young guys. He didn't. He didn't talk specifically about the young guys. You know, Jordan Hancock and Denzel Burke mm-hmm. and, and Andre Turrentine and, and uh, J.K. Johnson. He didn't talk about them individually by name, but he just he loved them. He thought they, they were they were making incredible progress early on. Terry Combs is a naturally optimistic person. This is the optimistic time of year. But you know, you just you see all the pieces. You see Seven Banks. You see Ken Brown. You see. Uh, Legend Cavazos and Ryan Watts as the second year guys. You see the first year guys, and, and it's just like everyone's feeling pretty good right now. Which, you know, I mean, it, Ryan Day was very pretty candid with us at one point and just said like was not feeling good about the, the defensive backs last year. He's not as worried about them this year, and I think yeah. you're you're starting to maybe after after talking to the individual guys, you start to see maybe why that might be the case. Well, especially based on what they dealt with last year, mm-hmm. and you go from last year to this year, even. I don't want to say outhouse to penthouse type of thing, but the living arrangements have changed mm-hmm. and things are, are much nicer in the new neighborhood for the Iowa State secondary. Just having options, you feel better and you can find different things that, that work. If something else doesn't work, you have other answers mm-hmm. as opposed to last year where if something didn't work, let's put another linebacker on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you, you don't get the sense there's going to be a lot of 4-4 this year, which is after watching some of the 4-4 last year, that's probably a good thing. I mean, and there are some questions at linebackers. You don't have as many mm-hmm. certain answers at linebacker as you did last year. But, uh, yeah, I think it feels like there are more certain answers in the secondary, which at least, you know, if there are problems, at least there may be different problems this year, which will be exciting and new. Yes. So that'll do it for uh, our show today. I uh, appreciate you guys joining us. We will uh, be back. We have uh, Monday. We have a uh, chance to talk to Ryan Day. Tuesday we'll be back in practice again, and then we're talking to another group of players. Thursday we're back in practice again, talk to another group of players. So we are we are kind of starting to get into a little bit of a groove with uh, our coverage of fall camp, and there's a lot to talk about. And uh, Sunday, Sunday, of course, the greatest day, uh, the entire Ohio State football calendar, hotel check-in day. Uh, Tony may be our, our guest for the Monday morning scoop because we may have to do some kind of a hotel check-in day show just because... Who looked good walking in? Who? Lo- yeah, exactly. Fashion, yeah, the fashion show of the, uh, of the hotel check-in day. It's just, it is the silliest, craziest day, but uh, that is fr- uh, Sunday at 5 to 7 p.m. I don't know. We might live stream something. We might, uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But there is going to be uh, plenty of, uh, you know, we have plenty to talk about from practice this week. There will be hotel check-in day on Sunday at BuckeyeScoop.com. And uh, our SD and board is humming, as always, with uh, lots of good inside information. Nevada Buck had another great practice report on Friday. You can check that out at BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, also, do make sure you check out our YouTube channel, which if you're watching on YouTube, just at the end of this video, there will be a little thing that will pop up. Just click on the little circle that says Buckeye Scoop in the right-hand corner. That'll subscribe you to our channel. That'll also make sure you meet, you get notified every time we post a new video. We have a lot of videos coming. You won't want to miss them. So uh, it's all free. Just, just subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. And finally, all of our great podcasts. You can uh, find them on whatever podcast platform you like. Just search Buckeye Scoop and you find them. You can subscribe right there. Give us a five-star rating and review, which will also help other folks find those shows, which we do genuinely appreciate. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.